Hi everyone, welcome to these Python tutorials where we are focusing primarily on image processing. In the last video, I provided a brief introduction to deep learning. And in the next upcoming videos, we are going to talk about various terminology of deep learning with a goal of eventually uh, getting the ability or getting the skills to put together our own uh, models with, that can solve our own image segmentation or classification problems. So we'll slowly get there, but let's uh, make sure we understand every little part of deep learning. So when you actually read papers or when you put your own code together, you get full understanding of what you are actually doing. Now, uh, deep learning, machine learning in general, is very computational intensive. So just using CPUs is not enough in most cases. To also outsource some of these computation to GPU, GPU stands for graphical processing unit. You use GPU to visualize your 3D images, for example, or for gaming. You need this graphics card and primarily by NVIDIA. And Google Colab provides us this free GPU. Of course, if you have a workstation with GPU, go ahead and get that ready for our upcoming tutorials. You know, install T, uh, TensorFlow for GPU and install Keras and you're all set. Uh, but if you do not have the money or resources to actually get your own workstation that's ready for deep learning, Google Colab can be a great alternative. Now, what is Google Colab? Let's go through what Google Colab is, and then I'll actually uh, create a brand new Google account and let's walk through the process so we both learn together uh, what uh, the difficulties are, or uh, how easily we can actually set up Google Colab. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it would be very easy, okay? Uh, now, what is Google Colab? It's, of course, by Google, and it's a free Jupyter notebook environment. So, uh, so far, we've been working with uh, Anaconda Spider, locally so we are storing our files locally everything is local right so this is in the cloud so it's a free jupyter notebook it's not uh, it's not uh, like our spider ide or like pycharm but this is actually a jupyter notebook which uh, you'll probably find very useful if you haven't uh, used jupyter notebooks in the past and uh, again, this is this is uh, if you if you think okay, I'm introducing new terminology. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. This is in fact Jupyter Notebook is much easier than how we have been doing. You know, with Jupyter Notebooks, you can write one single line and execute that. Look at uh, you know your results and then uh, add some notes to it if you would like to. So Jupyter Notebooks, uh, it's it's a great environment, especially for learning and teaching purposes. And out of the box, Google Colab supports many machine learning libraries, especially TensorFlow and Keras that I just mentioned about. You don't need to install them. You can just use them right out of the box as soon as you sign up. And the primary reason for you to be using Google Colab is because it's free cloud uh, service with free GPU. Of course, it comes uh, with some limitations, but I find this Google Colab to be much more powerful than my laptop that I have been using to record uh, all my videos until now. Okay, so uh, that's why let's uh, slowly switch to Google Colab for deep learning uh, tutorials. Now, Google Colab uses Drive, Google Drive. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with Google Drive, uh, and uh, uh, it, it makes use of your Google account, obviously. So make sure you sign up for a Google account and make sure you log on to your Google Drive where you store your files, right? So this is exactly the same drive where all the notebooks are going to be stored. And you can access Google Colab at colab.research.google.com. We'll get there in a minute, so let's park that topic for now. And you need to connect your Google Drive to Colab. I just mentioned you need Google Colab, and your notebooks are stored uh, uh, in Google Drive, and you have your Google Drive. Now, if you want to write a deep learning uh, algorithm, like let's say, let's say an application, a bunch of code, where you're reading a lot of files for training and a lot of files for validation, where do those files reside? They all reside in Google Drive. But by default, Google Drive is not linked to your Google Notebook. For every notebook where you need to read some of this data that's stored on your drive, you can actually uh, link between the notebook and the drive. If that sounds too weird or too difficult for now, uh, let's let's wait until we get there. But I just want to make sure that, okay, this is one of the steps that we need to uh, perform. All of these are very easy, actually. Okay, I'm just making sure that we understand what uh, we need to set up. And you need to select a GPU as part of your runtime. Every time you have a notebook uh, uh, on uh, Google Colab, 
And when you execute this, remember you are executing this in the cloud. What does that mean? Somewhere there is a server, there is a virtual machine that's actually waiting for you to execute this. And for that virtual machine, you have to tell Google that, hey, I would like to use GPU. So you have to enable GPU because GPU obviously is expensive for Google. Uh, and it's nice that they're giving it away for free to us, but it's not, uh, it's not enabled by default. Okay, by default, it's only CPU. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and like I said, don't worry, these steps are all very, very uh, easy, which we'll go through uh, in a minute. Now, if you wonder, okay, what do I get in the cloud? What type of resources? I already told you they're much better than the laptop I have. So, uh, or when it comes to GPU, especially. So uh, I, I just uh, signed up for Google Colab under my personal account and I just checked, okay, uh, what uh, type of resources are given to me? Uh, I got two core Xeon processor at 2.3 gigahertz. That's not bad. 13 GB of RAM, 38 GB of hard disk drive space, and uh, GPU, Tesla K80, 12 GB of GPU. This is this is a lot. My workstation that I have been using has 4 GB of GPU, so this is already three times better. And if you pay for uh, Google Colab Prime or Pro, you know, the next level, $10 per month, I think you can get up, bump this up two times or three times at least. And maximum lifetime of a virtual machine is 12 hours, meaning if you're training a model, the maximum you can train that uh, would be about 12 hours. That's why we learn how to save the model like frequently. Maybe you can say, okay, uh, uh, save, save the model anytime you see any improvement, right? So maximum 12 hours. So let's say, okay, I would like to save my model after 11 hour, 11 and a half hours. So the model is saved and virtual machine is shut down. The day after you continue the training by loading the pre-trained model. We we'll learn how to do all of this again as part of these, these, these tutorials. Um, and if you leave your virtual machine idle for about 90 minutes, it, can, it disconnects you from the service, meaning nothing's happening. It's just idle for 90 minutes. Obviously, there are hundreds, thousands of people who are uh, trying to get to these virtual machines. So if you're not doing anything, it's a waste of time for Google. So of course, they are going to disconnect you in about 90 minutes. Now, again, some of these you can overcome by paying for the pro account, right? I mean, you uh, that's exactly why you would like to get this pro account. Uh, and uh, so let's jump in. Let's jump into our uh, uh, and, and see how to set up Google Colab completely from scratch. I signed up for a new Google account so I can just record this video for you guys. So uh, let's jump in. Okay, so here is my Chrome browser with my brand new Google account that I created for this uh, tutorial series. And we haven't uh, set up our Colab or anything yet. So my assumption is you have a Google account. Now let's first jump into our drive. So let's go to drive.google.com. What do we see? This is the first time we are here. So all you see is, okay, this is a place for all your files and there is nothing here. But fine, we have, uh, we have a nice place to store our files. Now let's go to, let's leave this uh, browser open. Now let's go to a new one and type uh, our colab.research.google.com or if you just Google search for colab, you'll find this. So colab.research.google.com. So it shows up this first page because this is the first time uh, we actually came here. In fact, I just checked this uh, three minutes ago. As you can see, the history, it keeps track of this history. And uh, this is the primary page that, uh, that uh, we are going to uh, see. Now, I definitely recommend, like, let's go ahead and click, click cancel. I recommend you to go through all the documentation here because this is this can be very helpful. Now, let's uh, click on file and new notebook. This opens a new notebook. Let me click the other one so we don't confuse things. So this is the brand new notebook. And as you can see, we are not connected to any runtime. It just says, okay, click to connect. In fact, if I click on the uh, arrow here, you'll see connect to hosted runtime, which is Google hosted runtime in the cloud. So connect, this is what we want. Or you can connect to local runtime. So if you would like to work, uh, develop your code and everything in Google Colab, but then use your local system, local resources, uh, then you can also do that, okay? And if you have multiple sessions running, you can go ahead and manage it here. Now, before, uh, uh, let's go ahead and connect it. I was thinking about GPU, but let's go ahead and connect this. And it says allocating, connecting, and initializing. There you go, connected. Now I have 
some amount of RAM, some amount of uh, drive, and uh, I, I don't think we'll have GPU because we haven't said that yet, but this is fine. Let's go ahead and start with this. So I did type a few commands here. If you want, I, you can freeze the screen, copy these. I'll see if I can uh, paste these as part of the description so you can copy it. And you don't need, I mean, you need this once in your lifetime, right? I mean, you just need to, uh, these are the commands to figure out what type of resources you actually have. So if I just type like CPU underscore count, and if I go and execute that right here, it should, oh, sorry, uh, it's not defined because of a reason. So let's go back, where are we? So from PS utilities import star, and now each cell, I mean, again, if you're new to notebooks, this may be new, right? I mean, let's go ahead and kill this part. E you can add multiple cells or in each cell, you can actually write a whole bunch of code. It's up to you, okay? I try to separate chunks of code that belong together in each, uh, into separate cells. So let's add another cell about this and then just put our, uh, let's say PS utilities import star. Let's import everything. And I hope that should fix this issue. And GPU count, we have two, sorry, CPU count, we have two CPUs. And what of what size? That's the next command. So I can add it to this cell or I can create a new cell right there, new cell with code or new cell with text. You can only type text if you want. So let's only focus on code for now. So new cell with code. Let's go ahead and get our model name. So let's run this line and the model for CPU is Intel Xeon CPU at 2.3 gigahertz. That's pretty incredible actually. That's not, that's not bad for something that's free. Let's keep exploring. What's the next command? Let's look at uh, how much space is available on my hard disk. So it, let's uh, add the code here and I think everything looks good. Let's go ahead and run it. I have 78 gigabytes of uh, storage. That's, that's amazing. Again, I keep referring to this. This is free. Uh, and let's add another line of code. And let's go to this line and execute. And we have 13 GB of RAM. Meaning, if you're working with uh, uh, large files, make sure those files can actually fit into the memory that you're actually working with. That is 13 GB of memory. If you have larger files, obviously you need to cut them down into smaller chunks and work on smaller chunks so you can actually fit them into the memory, okay? Uh, now let's go ahead and look at the GPU type, right? I mean, here I anticipate an issue because we haven't, uh, uh, we haven't set up our runtime with GPU, but let's go ahead and run this, um, uh, run this, let's leave the minus L as is, and let's go ahead and run it. And it says NVIDIA SMI has failed because it couldn't communicate with NVIDIA driver. This is the command that actually talks with NVIDIA driver. So it tells us exactly what type of uh, hardware we have. So this is not going to work. So what are we going to do? Well, let's go to runtime up here and go down to change runtime type. And here by default, it's none, change it to GPU. Uh, TPU uh, is from Google. Let's focus on GPU for now. Okay, so GPU and save. You'll see up here, it's reconnecting. That's because anytime you change your runtime environment, it, it disconnects you and reconnects it back. Okay, so now we are connected. As you can see now, when I put my mouse uh, over, it says connected to Python 3 compute engine backend of GPU. So now I know that I have, uh, uh, I'm connected to GPU, but of what type? Let's go ahead and uh, rerun this. Now it says my GPU is Tesla T4, which is pretty good. That's a good graphics card for, again, for free, right? Uh, now, what type of specifications does it come with? Again, let's uh, remove the, I think it's the same command without L that kind of gives us a lot more information. So let's add another cell here and run this line. So there you go. Uh, a bit more information in terms of what version of CUDA you have uh, and all of that. And it uh, uh, looks like we have about 15 GB of uh, GPU for free. Uh, my workstation has 4 GB of GPU. It's an old one. And I see a significant difference between using a GPU and not using a GPU. So in this case, this, this is going to be very incredible. And they're giving it away for free, so why not use it? Uh, 
so I think this is, uh, uh, we should probably stop here, but one quick note before stopping is if you, uh, for, for deep learning, we'll be accessing files that we store on Google Drive. In fact, let's go to Google, uh, Google Drive, but before that, let's change the file. Uh, so until now, by default, it gave an untitled as the, as the name, right? So let's change this to exploring uh, Colab, okay? And now you can go to file and save or control S will also work. So let's go to file and save. It actually saved this. Now, if I go to my drive, you see previously we had nothing here. Now there is a folder called Colab Notebooks. And if I open this, hopefully we should see our file exploring Colab right here. So all Colab Notebooks are actually placed here and you can access them here. So this is where I would actually create a new folder called images or data and then dump all my images and data there so I can access it easily when I'm working from Colab by connecting my drive directly here. So as I mentioned earlier, all of this is very easy. It may sound like a bit difficult, but we can get our system ready uh, to leverage the 16 GB or typically you get 13 GB or 12 GB of uh, GPU, but still much better than not having a GPU. So in the next video, let's put together a few lines of code for a very simple problem. Well, it sounds simple because it is uh, we are using deep learning, but uh, let's put together a few lines of code to get our feet wet in terms of how does deep learning look like, what terminology is involved, uh, what is Keras, and we are going to import that, and uh, we are going to create our model using like uh, by adding some activation functions, and let's introduce, let's get our feet wet by talking about some of the terminology, and in the following videos, let's understand each and one of those terms to make sure we know exactly what the implications are when we are changing something. I see a lot of people just changing from uh, activation from ReLU to Sigmoid to something and then complain about, oh, my, my problem is not converging, right? Or I'm not, uh, 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 let, let's stick with this example. Problem is not converging. Why? Because you probably are using Sigmoid as part of your architecture uh, and and uh, it's, it's not converging because you're, you're which is called, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking actually whether I should I should uh, introduce all of these terms to you in this video. But since I started this, let's finish this off. This is called uh, you know a vanishing gradient problem because uh, you know your weights are not updating enough, so your problem is not converging if you use certain types. So the point I'm trying to make here is it really helps if you understand every bit of deep learning, which is not difficult at all unless you want to get into math and do all the differentiation and all of that. But typically, if you would like to understand what deep learning is and what each term actually means and what are the implications of changing one versus the other, then uh, that really helps you put together a great solution for your image processing application, okay? So please stay tuned. Again, uh, subscribe to this channel so you're notified as soon as we upload new videos. And do not forget to go to www.appear.com and sign up. That's also in the cloud. You can put together your own code into uh, usable applications. You can use pre-configured machine learning toolkit, meaning you can do your annotations there uh, and you can use our units to uh, segment your images and you can do a lot more. So please go ahead and do that. And there we are giving 100 GB of free space for you so you can work with your files. So hopefully we'll see you there and uh, let's actually meet in the next video. Thank you.